Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to find the maximum and minimum points of a function. Now, if you haven't already seen our videos on derivatives and concavity, take a quick look at those because you will need some of that information for this video. Okay, first, let's talk about the two different types of maximums and minimums absolute versus relative. An absolute max or min is the absolute highest or lowest point anywhere on the graph. So if we looked at this curve here, this point would be the absolute minimum and this point would be the absolute maximum. Then a relative max or min is any peak or valley anywhere on the graph. Unlike the absolute max or min, there can be several different relative maximums or minimums along a curve. Additionally, some points can even be both an absolute and relative max or min, like this point. And then finally, this point down here would be a relative minimum. So now that we covered what maximums and minimums are, let's now discuss how we find them. To do that, let's look at this graph with a relative minimum. Using the calculus skills we've learned so far, what is a defining feature of this minimum? Well, taking a look at the slope of the curve around the minimum point, we see that to the left, the curve has negative slope, and to the right, it has positive slope. But right at the minimum, the slope is completely flat and exactly equal to zero. And this is true for maximums, too the slope exactly at the maximum point is equal to zero. So that's precisely how we find relative maximums and minimums. We first find the function's derivative, then we set it equal to zero because we know the slope has to equal zero at a max or min. Then we solve this equation for x and use this to solve for the x's corresponding y point. And then finally, we need to classify all the points we find as either maximums or minimums. I know that's a lot of info to take in, so let's look at an example. Say we're asked to find all relative maxes and mins of a function f of x, where f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. First, let's find the function's derivative. Using the power rule, we find that f prime is equal to negative 2x plus 2. Then, again, we know all maximums and minimums have a slope of 0, so we need to set the derivative equal to 0 and solve. Let's first subtract 2 from both sides, then divide by negative 2 to get that x is equal to 1. Okay, this is the x-coordinate, but what is its corresponding y-coordinate? To find this, we plug this x value into our original f function because f of x gives us y values. Plugging in 1 and doing the math, we get that f of 1 is equal to 4. Alright, now we know that there is either a max or a min at 1 comma 4, but how do we classify which one it is? Well, there's a couple options there, so let's quickly go over them. To classify these points, we can use one of two methods, the first derivative test or the second derivative test. Let's first go over the first derivative test. Just as the name suggests, this test utilizes the function's first derivative, or slope, to distinguish between a maximum and minimum point. So how does it work? Well, we already know that the slope is equal to zero at a max or min, but what is the behavior of the slope on either side of this point? To help stay organized, I like to make a table like this, where we can plug in certain x values and their corresponding slope values. So for this maximum, we know at x equals 0, the curve has a slope of 0, so let's enter that in. Now let's plug in points to the left and right to see what the slope at those values are. If we were to plug in a point to the left like x equals negative 1, we would get some positive slope value. Then if we plug in a point to the right like x equals positive 1, 
we would get some negative slope value. Moving on to the minimum case, if we plug in a point to the left like x equals negative 1 again, we would get some negative slope value this time, where a point to the right would give a positive slope value. So that's the first derivative test. Once you find your max or min point, you then plug in x values to the left and right of it into the first derivative to classify it. If the slope goes from positive to zero to negative, the point is a maximum. If the slope goes from negative to zero to positive, it's then a minimum. Okay, so how about the second derivative test? How can we use a function's second derivative to classify a max or min? If you recall from our concavity video, the second derivative tells you which way the curve is bending at a specific point. So instead of plugging in points to the left and right of the possible max or min, we can directly plug in the x value of the max or min to the second derivative to classify it. If you plug the x value in and get a negative value, the curve is concave down at this point and must be a maximum, where if you plug it in and the second derivative is positive, it is concave up and must be a minimum. So overall, this second derivative test is easier because you only have to plug in one point instead of two points, but it does require you to take an additional derivative, so it's up to you to decide which might be best for a certain question. Now that we know how to classify maxes and mins, let's return to our example to finish it up. As a reminder, we just figured out that our function has a relative max or min at 1, 4, and we are about to classify it. To do that, let's try using the first derivative test. At x equals 1, we already know the derivative is equal to 0 because that's how we found it in the first place. For a point to the left, let's plug in x equals 0 to the derivative we found in step 1. Doing the math, we find that the slope at this point is positive 2. Next, let's plug in x equals 2 as a point to the right. As a result, we get that the slope at this point is negative 2. If we have a slope that goes from positive to 0 to negative, this must be a relative maximum. And by graphing our original function, we find the same thing. To make sure we have this down, let's do one more example. Once again, we are asked to find all relative maxes and mins of f of x where f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 5. First, using the power rule, we find that the derivative of this function is 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. Next, we set this first derivative equal to 0 because, again, we know the slope at a max or min is always equal to 0. To solve this, we can first recognize that we can factor out a 3 from every term, leaving us with 3 times x squared minus 2x minus 3. Next, we can either use the quadratic formula to solve this, or notice that we can factor this into 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 3. Thinking about which x values make this equation 0, we find that x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. This time, we happen to have two points to find and classify. Let's first find the y value for x equals negative 1. Plugging in this x value to the original f function, we find that our first max or min point is negative 1, 10. Then plugging in x equals 3 to f of x, we get that our second point is 3 comma negative 22. Now to classify each of these points, let's use the second derivative test this time. Taking the derivative of our first derivative, we find that the second derivative is 6x minus 6. Plugging in our first x value of negative 1, we find that the concavity of the function at this point is negative 12. Because this is negative, the graph must be concave down at this point, and negative 1, 10 must be a relative maximum. Then, plugging in x equals 3, we get that the second derivative is positive 12 at this point. 
because this is positive, the graph is concave up at this point, and 3 comma negative 22 must be a relative minimum. If we were to graph this curve, we would find that we are exactly right. Now remember, to find the relative maximums and minimums of a function, follow this process. First, take the derivative of the function. Then, set that equal to zero because the slope at all maxes and mins is equal to zero. Then, solve for x and use those values in your original f of x function to find their corresponding y values. Finally, classify each of these points by using either the first derivative or second derivative tests. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel so we can increase our reach to help more students like you. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams, don't let a class get in the way.